In this video, we're going to talk about something called implicit differentiation. Now this is a good time to introduce a little bit of convenient vocabulary. The word differentiate, okay, in English, differentiate means to tell the difference between two things. Uh, but in mathematics, this verb has a different meaning. This means to take a derivative. So instead of saying find the derivative of f of x, uh, I could also say differentiate f of x. Differentiation is just the noun version of this word. This is the process of finding a derivative. Implicit differentiation is the process of finding a derivative for an implicit relationship. An implicit relationship is something like the one that's given here. x squared plus y squared equals 4. Imagine that we took this equation and we tried to solve it and isolate y. We could begin to isolate y by moving the x squared to the other side of the equation y squared equals 4 take away x squared. But if you try to completely solve for y, if you try to get rid of that square, you run into an issue. Should y be equal to the positive square root of 4 minus x squared, or should y be equal to the negative square root of 4 minus x squared? This problem gets more pronounced if you consider the issue of trying to find the derivative of y with respect to x. If you wanted to find the derivative of y with respect to x, should you take the derivative of the positive square root? Or should you take the derivative of the negative square root? Implicit differentiation says Hey, I'm going to come up with a way for you to calculate dy dx without ever having to encounter this issue of whether you should take the positive square root or the negative square root. I'm going to give you a way to calculate dy over dx from the original implicit relationship so that you never have to go through this process of trying to solve for and isolate y. What would this give you the ability to do? This would give you the ability to do things like look at a point on the graph, for example, maybe a point right here, and find the slope of this tangent line. The slope of this tangent line would be given by dy dx. So let me outline the general technique here and then very quickly we're going to go into a concrete example so that I can show you what these steps look like in practice. The first thing that you want to do when you're finding dy dx using an implicit relationship is you want to take the equation which relates x and y and apply d dx to both sides. Then you want to simplify the equation in step one using the derivative rules. And anytime you encounter the derivative with respect to x of y, go ahead and just write that as dy dx. That's the slope of the tangent line. That's the quantity that you're trying to find. Then, Solve the equation in step 2 for dy dx. So let's go back to the implicit relationship x squared plus y squared equals 4. Let's find a formula that gives the slope of the tangent line to this circle at a point called xy, and that slope is denoted by dy dx. 
So step one, take your implicit relationship, x squared plus y squared equals four, and apply d dx to both sides. So let's now try and simplify this expression using the derivative rules. For example, I could start by using the sum rule to say that this is the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of y squared equals the derivative of four. Now, if I take x squared and I take the derivative with respect to x, power rule says that that is equal to two x. I also know that if I take the derivative of a constant like four, the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. However, where things get interesting is where we're taking the derivative of y squared. Although it may not seem like it at first, this is a situation where we will need to use the chain rule. In this case, our outer function is given by the function which squares things, blank squared. So the derivative of the outer function is given by two times blank. In this case though, the inner quantity, the quantity inside the square is given by y. And we're denoting its derivative by dy dx. So now let me go ahead and use that information to find the derivative with respect to x of y squared. The outer function's derivative, which is two times blank, with the inner function plugged in, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. That is equal to zero. So the derivative of y squared with respect to x is equal to 2y times dy dx. Step three is now just to get dy dx isolated on one side of the equation. So step number three is to take this equation, isolate dy dx. So for example, I might start by moving that term 2x to the right side. And then I might get rid of this multiplied 2y by dividing both sides by 2y. And after a little bit of cleaning, I find that the slope of the tangent line is given by negative x divided by positive y. Now it's a little unusual for us to obtain a derivative which contains both x's and y's in its formula. But in the case where you're working with an implicit relationship, this is not only okay, it's also expected. In implicit differentiation, you can expect that your dy dx formula will be in terms of both an x and a y. Because of that, if someone asks you for the slope of the tangent line at a specific location, they do need to tell you both the x value and the y value. So for example, someone says, based on the formula above, what is the slope of the tangent line to the circle at the points where x and y are both positive root two and at the points where x is positive but y is negative root two? To find the slope of the tangent line at the first point, all we have to do is plug this x and this y 
into the formula that gives it the slope of the tangent line at any point. So dy dx in this case would be equal to negative x divided by y, which would be minus 1. And at the point where x is positive root 2 and y is negative root 2, if I plug that x and y into the formula, I get the tangent line with slope negative root 2 divided by negative root 2, which is positive 1. Once again, let's check if these answers are reasonable. The implicit relationship between x and y is a circle of radius 2, and the first point is located where both x and y are positive numbers. If I drew a tangent line at this point, it is completely believable that the tangent line would have a negative slope. A negative slope like negative 1, since the tangent line is pointing downward. However, if I consider the tangent line at the vertically opposite point, where x is root 2 and y is negative root 2, and if I sketch a line tangent to the circle at that location, then it does make sense that we're getting a positive slope, because this pink tangent line is pointing upward. Implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation is used when you have an implicit relationship between x and y. And either it is very difficult or impossible to take that relationship and isolate y on one side of the equation. Implicit differentiation says don't bother to isolate y, just take the derivative of the equation exactly as it's presented to you, just be a little bit careful when you're taking the derivatives of terms that contain y, because you usually are going to need chain rule. Let's try it with something a little bit more complicated. Here we have an implicit relationship x squared times e to the y plus y equals sine of x. Step 1. Let's apply d dx to both sides. Now let's try and simplify this using the derivative rules. So first, let's apply sum rule, which says you can take the derivative of the first term separate from the derivative of the second term. That's equal to the derivative of sine of x with respect to x, which is cosine of x. So now looking at the first term, we have the derivative of a product, x squared times e to the y. So product rule kicks in and says, okay, that's the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Meanwhile, the derivative with respect to x of y is being called just dy dx for short. So let's continue to simplify. We have x squared, but now we have to calculate the derivative with respect to x of e to the y another opportunity to use chain rule. Now remember in our chain rule video that we actually had a shortcut for the specific case where we had e to the something. If we had e to the something, the derivative of that was copy paste e to the something and then multiply that by the derivative of that something. The derivative of y is what we're calling dy dx. Let's 
that completes the first term. Next we have e to the y times the derivative of x squared with respect to x. So x squared derivative with respect to x is given by 2 times x. So now all the derivatives are calculated and this quantity is completely simplified. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to solve for dy dx. Now in order to do that in this situation, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify all the terms that have a dy dx in them. Namely term number one and term number three. I'm going to keep these terms gathered together on the same side of the equation. However, any term that does not contain dy dx, I'm going to banish to the other side of the equation. Cosine x does not have dy dx, so I'm going to leave it on the right side. This middle term also does not contain a dy dx, so I'm going to move it to the right side. 2x e to the y. Now the beauty of gathering our terms together in this fashion is that now both of the terms on the left side contain a dy dx and therefore it is possible to factor the left side. I'm going to pull dy dx out of the first term and that leaves x squared e to the y. I'm going to pull dy dx out of the second term, and that's just going to leave 1. Finally, the only thing that we have left to do in order to isolate dy over dx is to get rid of this big multiplied quantity in the parentheses. To get rid of a multiplied quantity, all that you need to do is divide out that quantity. So the formula that you could use to find the tangent line at any given location is take cosine of the x value, subtract 2 times the x times e to the y, then divide that by x squared e to the y, and add that to 1. This formula would give you the slope of the tangent line to the relationship at any given point. One final example, most complicated example of all, let's find dy dx for the implicit relationship y cubed plus x cubed minus 3xy equals 0. Now I don't normally take examples directly out of our textbook but I really like this example actually. The curve looks really cool. So we'll do this example and we'll look at the curve and we'll have a look at the tangent line at the point where x and y are both equal to 3 over 2. Okay, so step number one as always is to apply ddx to both sides of the implicit relationship. So let's apply the sum rule, which says that this is the derivative with respect to x of y to the third power, plus the derivative with respect to x of x to the third power, minus 3 times the derivative with respect to x of x times y. On the far side of the equation, the derivative of 0, 0 is constant, so the result is again 0. So what's the derivative with respect to x of y to the third power? 
The situation here is very similar to when we have y to the second power in our very first example. In this case, the outer function is the cube function. And the derivative of the outer function is 3 blank squared. The inner function is y. So we put y into the blank, and then we multiply by the derivative of y. So then we have the derivative with respect to x of x cubed. In that case, we can use power rule directly. And that's 3 times x squared. Things get more interesting when we consider the product in the final term, because here we need to use product rule. So we have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And this is all equal to 0. Finally, let's do a little bit of cleaning. We have 3 times y squared dy dx. Then the 3x squared gets pulled down to the next line. Then we have negative 3 times x times dy dx. And in the back, the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So we have minus 3 times y times 1. And that is equal to 0. Once again, in order to solve for dy dx, we're going to start by identifying the terms which contain a dy dx and the terms that do not. Let's keep all the terms that have a dy dx on the left side of the equation. And let's move all the other terms to the right side of the equation. So 3y minus 3x squared. Then let's do a little bit of factoring. 3y squared minus 3x, factor dy dx out of both terms. And finally, to completely isolate dy dx, let's divide by this multiplied quantity here. Now you're welcome to leave this equation as it is right now. I'm noticing that everything seems to have a common factor of 3. So I might simplify this just a little bit. To get the slope of the tangent line in slightly simpler terms, the slope of the tangent line dy dx is equal to y minus x squared, y squared minus x. Okay. So now we should remind ourselves, however, what the actual question was asking for. The actual question was asking for the equation of the tangent line at the point 3 halves, 3 halves. Um, for that, I think I'm going to need more space. Hold on. As always, to find the equation of a line, the first thing that we need is its slope, and the second thing that we need is a point on the line. Now in this case, we're a little bit lucky because both the x and the y coordinates of the point on the line were given to us. But in order to get the slope, what we're going to need to do is plug 3 over 2, 3 over 2 into the slope formula that we found on the previous page. So the y value is 3 over 2 take away 3 over 2 squared, divide that by 3 over 2 squared, minus 3 over 2. You can simplify this using whatever techniques you want to. Personally, what I notice first is that currently the denominator and the numerator are exactly opposites of each other. 
Uh, they're exactly the opposite. They both have 3 over 2 and 3 over 2 squared. It's just that the minus signs are in opposite positions. So based on that, we could reduce this right away to negative 1. So having found the slope of the tangent line and having this point on the tangent line, we can use point slope form, which says y minus the y of your point is equal to your slope x minus the x of your point. You're free to leave it like this, or if you prefer, you can write y equals negative x minus 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 or any other combination of simplifications that you might be interested in. So here we are on Desmos looking at the graph of the implicit relationship that we were given in this problem. Isn't this cool? It's like a roller coaster with a loop-de-loop -loop right here going through the origin. Now the point on this graph that they were interested in was the point where 3 over 2 uh, was equal to both the x and the y coordinate. So right here at the very apex of the loop-de-loop. -loop. Let's go ahead and let's draw in the tangent line, which was y minus 3 over 2 equals the slope negative 1 times x minus 3 over 2. And sure enough, that purple line is perfectly tangent to the loop-de-loop -loop graph at the orange point. So that concludes today's material. We talked about implicit differentiation, which was the technique that could be used to find the slope of a tangent line to a graph that didn't necessarily represent the graph of a function. Implicit differentiation gave us a way to take the original unaltered equation and find the slope of the tangent line directly from that.